Welcome to Electro Online. Again, we're trying to understand what space is, that emptiness between the planets and the stars and the galaxies. There's something there, we call it space, empty space. We call it the vacuum of space, but we begin to understand that space has all kinds of properties. So we can't just talk about the emptiness of space. Space is actually some sort of fabric. And we're trying to understand that fabric by observing the things that we observe and then to try to make sense out of it. And one of the amazing things that we observe is the concept of gravity. Now, we have known since the days of Kepler that objects will travel around other objects. For example, he discovered that the planets traveled around the sun in elliptical orbits. And then we surmised that the moon travels around the Earth for the same reason, even if we didn't know what that reason was. There seems to be some sort of force of attraction causing it to do that. Of course, Newton came along and he was able to establish that famous universal equation of gravity that explained that objects that had mass were attracted to one another and we could calculate the force between them and because of that, we called that the force of gravity. But later on, when Einstein came along, he thought that, well, light is affected by gravity as well and it doesn't have any mass, so therefore, it must not be a force, there must be something else going on. And he began to realize that when you place an object, as big an object as the Earth, in space, of course we don't have to place it there, it's already there, but it causes something to happen around that object, around the Earth, to space. Something is changing. It causes space to warp or bend. The reason why we think it warps or bends is because we know that when light goes past a planet or past a star, it tends to change direction. Light, we know, always travels in a straight path, but when it's near a big object that has a gravitational field around it, we know that light changes direction. And we know that the moon is attracted to the Earth, but what is it really? And Einstein thought that it had to do something with space changing, the property of space here causes it to change when you place a large object that has mass in space. Now, even if you put an apple in space, you still have a small gravitational field around it, but it would be so small you could barely measure it because the, oh, an apple would be very small. But a big object like the moon or the earth or the sun, well, they have a significant effect on space around it. And so when the moon appears to be attracted to the earth, and the only way to keep the moon from crashing into the earth is have the moon go around with a certain velocity that keeps the moon from crashing into the earth. But something appears to be pulling it towards the earth and now we believe it's a warping of space. Something happens to the property of space here around it that causes the moon to fall into that. And if it wasn't for the fact that the moon goes around the earth, it revolves around the earth, then the moon would crash into the earth. So gravity is actually caused by having an object placed into space which does something to space around it. Probably somewhat similar to what happens when you place a charge in space. When you have a charged object that's in space, it creates an electric field. It does something to space around it and any other object coming near that charged object will either be repelled if it's another positive charge or attracted if it's a negative charge. And again, what is that force of attraction? It must be something about space that when you place a charge in it that causes space around it to change, just like when you place a mass in space, it causes space to change around it and other masses tend to fall into that whatever it is that's changed in space. It's almost like there's less pressure on this side and more pressure on this side. The closer you are to a planet, the less pressure there is, so all objects fall into the region of less pressure. But again, we don't think it's pressure. It might be warping a space. And then you say, well, warping a space, what does that mean? Well, again, that's what we're trying to discover. What is it really that's going on? What is it about space that causes other objects to fall into a bigger object because that bigger object does something to the space around it? So gravitational force is simply caused by putting object into space, which causes space around them to change, which causes then the effect as if there's a force attracting objects to one another. Space is a strange substance and it does all kinds of interesting things that make the universe go around, so to speak. Well, hopefully we're getting closer to the mystery of what space is. So the moon was traveling around the earth at a less speed. 
velocity? Would it actually fall in a little fast? Yes, if the moon were to be slowed down for some reason, the moon would simply spiral into the earth and eventually crash with the earth. That's absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's keeping the moon from crashing is having that enough speed to keep it from doing that. And if the speed is too high, it will slowly spiral away from the, from the Earth. That's right. <laughs> Actually, the Moon is moving away from, from the Earth, but that's because of the tidal interaction between the Earth and the Moon. So it is slowly spiraling away. The Moon will slowly be going farther and farther away. And eventually, there no longer will be such a thing as a total solar eclipse, unfortunately. But we get, still get to see them. I'm beginning to think that whatever causes charges to attract one another is a similar reason, not the same reason, because mass affects with space differently than charge affects with space. And the amount of the force difference is absolutely enormous. The force between charge objects is 10 to the 20th time as strong as the force between masses. And there's a good reason for that, otherwise you couldn't have atoms, and other than that you couldn't have stars and planets and galaxies. So the force seems to be appropriate for what it needs to be, but there must be some interaction between space and matter, causing warping, causing gravity, and space and charge objects, which causes the electric field and the magnetic field. And so, again, I think it's an interaction between charges in, in the space and mass and space causing these apparent forces.